Hey everyone, this is DJ Music, and I'm back for another video. Today I'm going to be going over some of my filters that I've created for you guys. Um, I actually have three for you today. Two of them are new, and then one of them is actually an update that I'm really excited to be finally releasing. Um, so this one right now is a set block command block filter. This one basically will take any com any command block that you have and create a set block command block to this. So you can put the set block anywhere in the world and ca uh, cause this command and this command block to update. And there's a couple options with that, so I'll go over all that. There's also a filter over here, which will take any book in these chests and basically convert this into, um, it will convert these into give commands or summon commands. So you can give uh, command blocks or give com give books with commands. Um, so that makes it really easy to actually do maps. So if you want to give everyone a book at the beginning of a map or if you want to summon at a specific location, you can now do that. So that's going to be a lot easier. I actually used it um, on my Sky Survival, Sky Survival map. You haven't seen this yet because it hasn't come up in the series yet. But this, uh, this is actually a command block that I used with this filter for to cause this to work. So I'll go over that. And then the final one, one I'm most excited to actually release. You've already seen this part. Uh, but basically this is just my uh, say to tell raw command. Um, I actually updated it. So now if you do this, it'll actually work with selectors and everything. Works for all these different things, so let's go through it. Firstly, for the set block command block filter, we're gonna go over this one. So I just have say hello. I have a new command, which basically can be any command. I have a set block, and then I have a TP command. So this will work for any command that you want to use. Um, there's a couple of options. There's the options of coordinates, um, which will basically set the block to a specific coordinate. So I just have this one marked off right now. Um, there's the same coordinates. And there's a blank coordinates, so you can enter your own coordinates into it. So let's go into MC Edit and check it out now. Now that we're in MC Edit, let's actually select some blocks. So this is going to be the coordinate option. So let's select these right here. Click Filter. And you want to select the Convert command to Set Block command. This will basically convert this to, uh, command block into a set block command block for the same command. So you want to use four coordinates. There's three different options. Use command block coordinates, which will actually use the coordinates of each command block. Use the following coordinates to use the ones down here, or leave the coordinates blank. Now what we want to do first, I'm actually going to do coordinates. So let's use the following coordinates, and then the ones we want to use are 300, 55, and 1300. That'll set the block to this green block over right here, and click filter. So now it already ran. If you look at all of these, you actually will see a set block command to these coordinates, and then that'll actually create a command block. The next option that we have is the same coordinate. So let's go right here to right here and click filter. So now the same one we're going to use to use the command block coordinates. So it actually update all of these. Click filter. And there we go. Now for the for the, anytime you want to use this um, use the court command block coordinates, you want to copy it because otherwise it'll actually set this command block and then you it just kind of deactivates the command. So you want to do is to actually make it work. So you want to clone it. So let's clone it up five blocks and click clone. Now if you do this correctly it shouldn't actually update the commands. It might um, but it should be fine. For the last one this is actually going to be the blank option so it's selected it once once again click filter and you want to select the leave coordinates blank option. None of this matters click filter. Now if you select it you will see that it will say set block and then there will be no um, coordinates. Let's go back into the game. Okay, we are back in the game, and let's see what happens. So the coordinates, if you look at the command block, now it says set block, the coordinates, command block, zero replace, and then it has a command. So basically, it took the command that was already in the command block and made it a set block command block. So now if you step on any of these, you'll see that actually updates to command block with the original command. So if you want to um, create an easy way to do it, if you have to like update a lot of command, or if you want, if you have to update a specific command, in a command block, you can just kind of go back and forth, and you don't have to worry about uh, figuring out the syntax for the command. Command. So that's that option. The next one is the same coordinates. So this actually updates it here, but if you update it, then you'll see that it actually updates this command block because there's I can just update this. So now this one says set block. This one originally has an old command. If I click this, you'll see it updates to the new one, and then this one finally goes and updates it to hello. So basically if you, now if I actually um, change this, so if I destroy this all these command blocks, 
and then activate them all again. So let me just get a really quick, let me just get a redstone block. If I build up, you'll see as I actually go down, you'll see it actually just appear below me, which it did. So now there's command blocks right down there. So basically if I step on this now, I'll get teleported up, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's basically that option. And then the final option is just pretty simple. Um, it just makes it so that it just sets the set block to a blank command so you can enter the coordinates that you want. So that, that's just good if you don't know where you want to put it, but you want to actually have the command block work. So basically all these will just not work right now. You just have to add coordinates. And then once you add coordinates, it'll work. So yeah, it's a simple command, but it's definitely very useful. And that's pretty much it for this command. The next filter that we're going to be going over is the book command filter. And this is basically, um, it's, it has to do with books. I have a couple features relating to different books. So this one, there's all the exact same chest. So I'm going to go over all the options in the filter. Basically, it works with book and quills as well as finished book. If I take a look at um, these, then you will see. Let's put this back like that. Then you'll see that I can actually kind of type in these books exactly like that. And then I can also, it's not signed. Uh, and these ones, I've basically already signed them. And yeah, so it's pretty simple. So yeah, let's go into MC Edit and see what we can do with them. Now that we're in MC Edit, let's actually run some commands on these and get them to work. So this one, we're going to convert to a give command blocks. So let's just select the chest and click filter. You want to select the book to command block filter. Basically, you can actually put colors in it if you use a symbol. Um, so if you want like dark red, you just basically type this and then let's see, so we can do dark red if you just do like that. It's same as um, colored. That's just the way that you have to do it for now because that still is the way you actually color stuff and titles and stuff. So yeah, anyway, let's continue on. So let's actually keep the original title and keep the original author. Actually, let's change the author. So instead of author, let's just say, um, what do we want the author to be? Let's make it book author because that's a cool name, author the second. That's the, that's the author's name. We want it to be a give, and then this option we do not want yet because that will just basically convert written books to writable books, which we'll show at the end. Click filter, and then now this actually contains a, so let's actually just look at it later. So now this one, we want to make it a summon command, so we can do the exact same thing. Click the chest, click filter, and this time make this summon, and click filter once again. For the final one, we're actually going to do the last option. So click filter and then check this box. This will basically convert uh, signed books so you can actually write in them again. So you can actually change books with this if you want to do that. Click filter and let's go back into the game. We are back in the game and let's see what happened. So basically all of these, you actually have a command block for each book that you've had. Um, and now you can actually see all of the different options that you have. So let's actually grab some of these. We'll grab one of each. Let's put them on the ground and let's spawn some books. And there we go. So basically the first one, let's clear our inventory so we can see what happens. So this one gives us the book. It already has the text in it. Um, so basically it just converts it to a to a command. Um, you don't, not really anything different than that. You just It just took the book that was right here and converted it into a command to actually give us the book instead of just having the original book. The next one gives us a finished book version of this. As you can see, it's exactly the same. Um, if you look at the actual title, it does say book author the second. And it says finished book because that was the original title in the chest. So basically, if you haven't named it with an anvil, um, that's what it will look like. So now, if you look at the third one, this one actually has a custom title because the original has a custom title, as you can see right there. So it kept the original title, and you can see this wonderful book that I've already created. And yeah, so that's basically all it is for that. It just creates a give command that when you click the button, it gives all players the written book. Simple as that. Let's destroy all these. Cool. The next one is a summon command. So let's grab one of each one of each of these and let's put these down. So the original default, I believe, is to summon it right above. So as you can see, it summons it right on top. So let's grab this once again. And you can see that it's the exact same thing. Um, it basically just creates a book like you did before. Same with this one, just writable version. Same exact thing, except for the summon this time. And the last thing is the sky, story behind Sky Survival. Again, the exact same thing. So that's basically that part of the filter. Um, it just makes everything a lot easier if you use, like, I actually use, it's called uh, Edit or Review. I forget what the exact title of the application that I use. But there are many applications that you can use to actually create books outside um, of your game that are a lot easier to make custom text and stuff. So you can actually use those to um, create the books and then convert them to a command block later, which is exactly how I designed this book. That's why it's all colored and cool stuff. 
So yeah, that's basically the easiest way to do that. I wanted to make sure that I could actually give it easily. And there wasn't really a good way to give command blocks or give books using commands. So I decided to create a filter because it's a lot. It's, these commands are pretty difficult. If I look at how long they are, especially this one, like it has the items, it has the tags, it has all this wonderful information. It's just quite annoying to deal with. So I decided to create a filter for it and yeah. The final part of the filter actually just basically converts all of the written books into writable books. So now if you actually open this book and you open it, you actually can completely edit these text. So this was the original book. I can actually like backspace a little bit and kind of change words. If I want to add stuff to it, then I can completely do that. Um, as long as it doesn't go too far, like I can type that and sign it. So I can actually completely edit the text if I've already made a mistake and already signed it. So this is just useful if you accidentally want to change something. Um, you can also do this, of course, in the command. But yeah, it just makes it really easily easy to update stuff that you've already changed because you maybe if you want to change one word that you mistaked or you made a mistake with. So it just makes it really easy to do that. Now the final filter I have for you guys is basically selectors and um, for the say command. Now this is, it's pretty simple, but I actually added a lot of functionality because there's a lot of different, um, in, like different ways that people use at A and selectors. So I made it a little bit easier to understand and stuff like that just because I didn't want to make it a little bit, um, I didn't want to cut you guys off of functionality like by removing specific stuff. So this basically works with any say command. Any site command, this will now work, including selectors, including brackets, everything. So this is basically the one command filter that I've worked my hardest on, and I'm definitely excited to actually release the updated stuff with this. So let's look it over. So say add A is in the game. You've seen this before. I'm in the game. Um, I'm actually on a team right now, so my color is red. But actually, um, the, one of the cool things is, is if you're if you're on a team, it actually will completely overwrite the color. So you can actually um, show you can have a custom color with this. And then if they're, on, if they're on a team that their color is white, then it will actually change the color for the name. Otherwise, it will keep the original color. So that's just another note. This is where players in the game, DJ Music. Stay away from DJ Music. He's armed and dangerous. Basically, there's text before and after. There's actually lots of different connect, uh, different codes. So there's at A, at P, at R, and at E. These all work. So if I drop an item on the ground, you actually will see it say the name of that. You'll see um, right here, tile or item.tile.commandblock. Basically, if it works for items too. So if you want to like say that, I don't know why you'd ever want to say title of a command block like on ground, but you can do it with that. It does work with this. And then, of course, it, um, a, a title that's attached. So I'm within five blocks of this command block. If I move away, then it doesn't work. So basically, you can actually use uh, this tag inside. You can use score for anything like this, but it basically works with anything like that. So let's, I just copied it up a little bit, and let's actually run this filter to see what it can do. Now that we're in MC Edit for one final time, let's run this filter. So once you click filter, you want to select the convert say to tell raw filter. And then basically there's all these options. I'm not going to explain them all. Um, they are exactly the same. Nothing has changed except for now it works for selectors. So all, all the stuff here is exactly the same. So all I'm going to do is kind of run it and show you the examples. So first of all, we're going to do this one. And then filter test is the example. Click filter. Now let's go up one more. We filter again and this time we're just going to do text there we go and there we go so now let's head back into the game and see what it looks like we are back in the game one final time and let's look at what has changed so right now if i click that you'll see dj music is in the game now this is the same thing except for now it says it with tell raw um as i said because i had no title on the command block it used a default which was filter test i also set up the configuration so it was bolded and the default text was green now, if you actually look at the tag in here, you actually will see, if I go to my title, the selector tag is right here, and the color is set to green. But because um, I'm on a team, it overwrites that, and italic is actually is overwritten as well, as well as bold, colon, false. Um, so if you have anything like that, it'll always overwrite it, just because of the, fa the way that it works. So you, as soon as I lose my team, if I go scoreboard, team, sleeve, then you actually will see that if I run this again, it's all green. So you actually can completely customize the color if you want to do that way, um, just by working with teams if you want to make it stand out. Now, this is the exact same thing up here, except for it's just the title. And my name is still green because that's the default. So pretty, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. And now let's go down here. So this is the old one. Whoops. This is the old one, Players in the Game, DJ Music. Now, in this, this time, it's exactly the same thing, except for it has that. And again, it's the exact same thing, except for without the filter text at the beginning. So basically, it just looks exactly the same. 
Um, and if you look in here, you can see the selector tag. It has the tags at the end that I've configured. And yeah, now let's look at this one. So this has text before and after. Um, so if you look at it again, it's exactly the same thing, except for it has um, the filter test at the beginning. Once again, it's exactly the same without the filter test. So it basically completely, um, completely keeps this. And it will just completely keep the same command, exactly how you formatted it, exactly how you want it, um, which is pretty nice. So I'm excited to be actually be able to use this. I might actually write my commands and says, and then write, run this filter to make them all uh, work with tell raw because tell raw com commands are not the most easy um, to code. Says a lot easier, especially when you have this. So yeah. Now this one, um, this one looked really weird like this. This one actually is probably the one that I'm most proud of because it actually in most command blocks this um, and this filter. It takes, it takes a while to actually program this into the game. So I'm proud that I was able to actually make it work. But as you can see, the selectors do work multiple times with one command. DJ music once, twice, three times, and four times for all the at A, at P, at R, and at E. So all of them will work. Um, you can put them right next to each other. You can put them anywhere in the command. As long as they're actually in there, it will recognize it as a command and separate it into its own selector tag. And finally, same exact thing except for with the... Um, without the beginning. So yeah, this is the last thing. And of course it does work within five blocks. As it says, I'm within five blocks. If I move away, it will not say my name. As you can see, it's still saying my name. There it goes. Now it doesn't work. So if you're within five blocks, it will not actually update it. Um, and that's just how the uh, selector works. So it's kind of exactly like the say command. And then of course it works here too, except for it's without the blue at the beginning. So yeah, that's basically the addition to this command. Um, this is my, it has like six, 500 lines of code, I believe. It's like 400 or 500. So this is definitely one of my most complex filters, um, but I had a lot of time run, uh, writing it because it, it like taught me a lot about Python and stuff like that. So I'm excited that I'm actually be able to release this for you guys. And I hope that you enjoyed all three of these filters because they're three of my favorites and I'm excited that I was actually able to write them and release them finally for you guys. So yeah. So that's about it for all my filter reviews. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.